Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Mazzoni. This is Sama, Seattle, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. I have a great friend on today. Uh, I've been looking forward to having a conversation with this artist for quite a while. The last time we got a chance to speak professionally was at KXP on my radio show, Wopop, and this was pre-Trump, pre-pandemic. And so a lot has changed in the world. He's also Ukrainian, uh, so obviously that world has changed. I'm talking about Eugene Hoots of Gogo Bordello, uh, lead singer, songwriter. He has a new record out with the band called Solidatine, and he is collaborating with some amazing Ukrainian artists uh, that are singing songs about what is going on. Some legendary pieces tied to some poetry and also new music to raise awareness about the uh, reality of what is happening in, um, in Ukraine right now and throughout the world. They're quite a successful band. I've been a fan forever, and uh, we have a bunch of mutual friends. So obviously, we spoke for a long time, and um, I'm stoked to be able to share this beautiful conversation with Eugene Hooch with you. We cover punk rock. We cover Poland. We cover Ukraine. We cover uh, Joseph Campbell. We cover um, ancient Hindu philosophy. One of my favorite conversations in quite a long time. So I'm stoked to be able to share that with you on Sama, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. And as always, if you like what you're seeing here, please share, subscribe, and like us on social media so um, we can offer more opportunities for artists from literally all over the world to have a platform to be seen and to be heard. And hopefully, hopefully, uh, you'll fall in love with them too. So once again, Eugene Hoots, Gogo Bordello, on Sama, Seattle Circuit Music. Eugene, thanks for being here. How have you been? Yeah, doing all right. What's been going on in your in your life? Um, the last time we had you on was a while ago. You were um, you were still living in Brazil, and yeah. you were you were thinking about you know what what is the next uh, what's the next step? What's going on? You obviously, always representing. Always representing. Muito yeah. obrigado. Um, obrigado. But this is an interesting time. We were just talking about you got a you got a tour coming up, mm -hmm. spring summer, and um, the last time I had you on at KXP, it was a different world. Um, and now you it are was before Trump and before pandemic and before, before Trump, the war. pandemic and before the war. That's a lot of difference. That's like tectonic, to me tectonic shifts. Yeah, yeah. To me, that's kind of like the end of one century and the beginning of another century. Like Thin for, the sickle, for sure. Yeah, it was like, okay, so this is it. And now, um, and the conversations that we're having, because, you know, I'm Polish, you're Ukrainian, we're both immigrants, and, you know, we both grew up under the polarity, you know, the Soviet system and the, the, the Western system. Yeah. And the conversations that we're having right now about what's going on in the world feels like we're talking about the 1600s, you know, just these... these these transformational changes that have been going on. Yeah, and the regression is there for sure. Yeah, it is, it is, but it's also global. You know, things in the 1600s that were going on in China didn't really affect what was going on here right now. And as a musician, as somebody who's actually, this is your life's work, you're putting, it, you're putting stuff out there, you didn't really represent your culture, your heritage, your... Um, I'm not saying that you're folkloric or anything like that, but you know you're 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 carrying, you're representing, 
and you've now become one of these artists that is representational of Ukraine, the struggle you've actually been, you played there. You, you're, this is an, a really interesting place to be from where, like, you know, start wearing purple and some of the great songs that, you know, and your, and your DJ history and everything. It's just like, it's a really interesting pivot how it goes. And I would love to just talk to you about that. Like, what, what's going through your mind as this, this tectonic shift is going on around you? Well, I mean, you know, as being punk rocker, like lifetime, <clears throat> life or punk rocker, you know, it's not really shocking. In a way, punk rock as a culture prepares you and gears you up for that. And uh, before your turn comes to represent, you're already like 13, 14 years old, you're already listening to other people who are representing and doing that for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Yeah, you might be uh, that young, but the guys in Minor Thread, they're already doing that for you. And, uh, you know, the ne next incarnation comes, whatever it might be, you know, uh, Fugazi or Shelter or, you know, Gorilla Biscuits or whatever other streaks punk can take um, as, a, as a super diverse, you know, uh, culture. You are kind of looking up to people who are essentially... Uh, already mentally and spiritually working on being resilient to all these things you know um and so you know even going back to you know chromags and you know albums like you know the age of quarrel which is you know translation for kali yuga uh hindus um theory of I think it's more than theory, definitely, of uh, time shifting time yeah. of time zones. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at it. I mean, we're living in a thick of it. Just like the other day, I came was telling somebody about Kali Yuga, and we pulled it up, and there was all these symptoms of it just listed. And it was like it was like twenty symptoms about superficiality and hypocrisy of the times of the of the era that we are in. <laughs> you know. And it's, it's mind-blowing how accurate it is. I mean, it's just like, you know, it literally has things outlined be, beyond being, beyond possibilities of, you know, uh, just maniacal dictators and all these kind of things. It just says straight up, like, people will become so superficial that their, their whole meaning of life will boil down to their hairstyle, you know? <laughs> people will become so hypocritical that they will base their, uh, you know, social and every status on something uh, even more superficial than lifestyle. And we're looking at it. We're lo yeah. looking at a thick of it. So if you grew up listening to you know, music on the radio, then you're going to be probably a lot less geared up for these tectonic changes than if you grew up listening to Chromags and Shelter and Fugazi. I can tell you that much for nothing, you know? No, it's true. It's true. You you do. I have two small kids. You know, teenagers. I shouldn't say mm -hmm. small. They, they'd hit me right now if they, they said that. And it's it's interesting to see the punk ethos manifest in them, um, and how they're pushing back. And we've been a little apprehensive about you know letting go on social media, but it seems to be the place where a lot of communities are being made. And true. to that superficiality that you're talking about, it it's definitely there. You know, they're. Uh, how do you look? What's the latest thing? What's going on? How are you presenting your ideal lifestyle? And and it's intriguing because it's like, you know, I live in the United States, as you as do you. And this country, which is in many ways really amazing, the most diverse country I've ever been to in my life, can be very myopic. And they don't really, uh, they're not very patient. And they don't really have a historical sense of like, yo, this has been an ongoing cycle. This is just like, yeah. you know... The, the, the things that you think are permanent aren't really permanent. And the Cayuga that you're talking exactly. about is a prime example as of that. We, as we know that very well, because you were born in the Soviet Union, there was supposedly some monumental, undestructible thing. And then, you know, like 20 minutes later, it was all gone. <laughs> 1989. <laughs> you know, the wall so goes the perception down. On, 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 the, on, the, on that is different. On, but they never... There's reasons on that why it's gone, because the, the harder, you know the harder you need to work on keeping something together against its will, the, 
the bigger the reaction, you know, for every yeah. action. And that's yeah. why it's gone, you know. Yeah, it's a prime example how, you know, things like punk rock were forbidden. And, you know, the, the state kept trying to push against that. They would They would cram these kinds of, like, folkloric ideals of the peasant and the worker. And, you know, we would go to these, like, showcases where the school you had to go, you wear your little red kerchief, and it's like the village bands are playing. And it's like, this doesn't really mean anything at all. And you wanted something else. You wanted, you wanted something that represented the counter to that. And obviously Absolutely. the state fell. And now we're in a different kind of, um, a different kind of reality, a different kind of place where we're all connected in a really interesting way. The fact that you and I are talking to each other in real time, you're in New York, I'm in Seattle, but I just talked to, I spoke to somebody recently in Mongolia. I spoke to somebody recently in the jungles of Colombia. Technology has allowed us to connect in, in ways that we had never done, have never even conceptualized before. You know, it's almost shamanic how quickly things are happening. And I want to talk this about, with, with this about a little bit of it because we both kind of came up in an interesting way where this punk aesthetic was something that it became all of you. Like, you know, as soon as you heard it, you felt like you were being... You were being heard. You were, you you saw something that could lead you well, to gives you, your future. It gives you, I mean, it gives you um, kind of instant audience to a certain extent. Extent, you know, because it's a it's a boiled down, uh, kind of distilled, you know, fraction of people that get behind it. Yeah. And so, and they and they are usually have a greater taste and a greater. Uh, they usually come from kind of a unprivileged but intellectual uh in the same time very uh kind of seeking seeking uh with seeking attitude and so you have people who are relatively unpretentious and ready to do adventurous you know events and music and just they're seekers you know they're seekers so, no it's true seekers i think you wrote a song about that um yeah. a so little while there. ago but i'm curious because you're traveling all over the world you're now representing your country, you know, you're representing a type of a genre and you're and you've had success. You continue to have success. You're, you're finding an audience more so than ever before. We're connecting this way. So suddenly punk rockers in Mongolia, in Kazakhstan, in Iran, um, you know, in in Morocco, in South Africa can suddenly find each other right now. You know, yeah. there's some language issues and sometimes there's some issues with uh uh, heritage and creed and everything, but those can be, you know, relatively. They can be, they can be overcome. They can be what overcome you... through listening to bad brands altogether. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, like yes, obviously, it's like, you know, um, one of the 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 things that I was talking about with you before about this country. It's like I'm for the last thirty five years, I've been like, dude, I know, I love this Western music in English and all these other guys, but you got to check this stuff out out of Uganda. You got to check this stuff out. And, you know, yeah. I have a small a small group that are like, wow, but they're like, I had no idea. Like, you know, people don't understand. Um, they, they think that their perception of what other places are is real. And, you know, it's almost like jarring for them to realize that they're people just like you. They're kids just like you, and they're trying to figure out how to live in their world. And mm -hmm. I want to get a little shamanic with you here because we're in this Let's transition we're in this transition period right now and i want things you know i'm a bit of a hippie not too much but a bit of a hippie i want the world to find each other i want us to find that shared humanity between all of us and i've seen this in various genres i've seen this manifest i've seen this in metal shows it's the most intriguing thing where like everybody comes together even though the music is so intense and raw and mean everybody loves each other you know it's this really intriguing space to be in and the same yeah. with punk shows you know people even take care of each other obviously there's going to be some idiots slashing you know smashing things around but people tend to take care of each other what do you think is going to come from all this like trip with me for a little bit what do you think in two three years what do you think the world's going to be like knowing that we're in this place well yeah i mean i think that uh well this those are several questions in one but it's my style. Ge yeah, generally, uh, l l let's let's undo them into several parts. Generally, I tend to think that um, 
whatever comes can be dealt with and uh, it will be dealt with in the most positive way um, affordable at that time and you know just from the short mileage that I had in this world I already could learn one thing is that there will be people all the time telling you that hey you know uh, back in the day things were happening now they're not happening this is like things are finished you're barely catching the last call like I've heard that rap my entire <laughs> life you know as they're <laughs> You know what I mean? And then you get there and it's, and, but you in, in the same time feel like it's a clean slate because you just got there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you don't subscribe to that idea that, you know, it's this whole postmodernistic swamp and everything has been done and the blah, 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 uh, then you go, you're go you going to go on propel and do your own things. And all those people who are telling you how things were uh, finished, they're going to come and, you know, they kind of come to you back and say, "Hey, wow, I was wrong." Yeah. So, if they way, could admit that, story of Gogo Bordello, you know, I mean, yeah. we just kind of, uh, yeah, that was a clean slate for us, you know, and uh, we still went on kind of creating our own brand of punk rock because that was the whole idea, you know, is is to shake it all up, give it new vitality, and infuse it with new. Uh, previously unused vitamins you know like uh ukrainian and romanian and hungarian gypsy music you yeah know? yeah in, in so, many ways it was new york and in many ways that was new york because you know new york is um when i first started coming to new york to see shows i was still living in, in vermont where i was originally sent by a, a refugee program uh, with my with my parents so there i hit it off with like an awesome uh, punk rock scene, you know, that was ran by kids in a in a in a very cool place called 242 Main. You know, I started coming to see shows in New York, and I would go to uh, you know Coney Island High or Brownies or CBGBs, and actually got to play there uh, with my previous bands, um, the Cossacks and the Fags, and um, I would go and play a gig, and then you know we would check out the neighborhood and I would see that these places are literally next door to a Ukrainian restaurant or Ukrainian social club or Ukrainian bar. So I was like, wow, I think I really like this place. It's kind of, I walked in into a, a you know, a, a reality that I would probably would like to create for myself with uh, some cyber envisioning uh, technology, you know, and it had the roots and it had all the progressive ongoing things represented. And what's more, as I looked up history and start meeting people in the neighborhood, you know, of Ukrainian descent and start connecting with the community, I found out that, you know, all these halls of uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian national home, right above Veselka, the famous, you know, Ukrainian restaurant in yeah. this village, is where new order and misfits and you know and everyone and their mom played in a, a you know in the early movements of punk and hardcore yeah because the connection was obvious you know ukrainian yeah. community would be like ukrainian and polish community would be the first to lend their spaces to something that has any kind of umpa. yeah <laughs> and lord knows Punk and hardcore had some oompa. No, no, know? completely. And at the time, it was like, you know, once you leave your country, it changes you. It changes you in a way that, you know, this is the conversation I'm having with my, with my teenagers right now. It's like, I know that I've been living in America for a while, but I'm not, I'm from a different place. I have a different language. I have a different kind of perspective. And it makes you more open to other perspectives. When I ended up in the States, there was still this, like, stupid Polak and all this shit that was going on. And I, I ended up in Boston, wow. in Dorchester, really, really tough. Like, you know, two days in, I'm nine years old, I get beat up. And so it's like, okay, it was like but such how is a... how possible? Polish, Pol Poland is so known for so many intellectual achievements. That was the confusion. That was like, I was like, what the hell is going on? I was trying to explain to people, it's like, look, I come from a colonized country. You have to understand that my, I didn't have a country until 
you know, after World War One, there was this ongoing struggle of liberation that was going on yeah. for so long. And back so back and forth, yeah, back and forth and no country, something. So the intelligentsia, you know, they stayed. They stayed in Krakow. They stayed in Warsaw. They stayed in Donsk. But the peasants moved. It was the time, you know, when Ellis Island was filling. So all, you know, Poland as Ukraine, especially at the time, was very agrarian, you know, huge forest and and people, you know, you just. You, that's what you did. You lived in a village. You found another village girl, and then you, you raised cattle or a wheat forest. Right. And so you're suddenly in the middle of a, you know, Chicago or Boston or New York, and you don't understand what's going on. That's a little bit different from even how I thought of Poland while growing up in 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 Ukraine, which was part of Soviet Union at the time. Because yeah. my Poland was like you know Stanislav Lem and uh, yeah yeah you know, greatest writer and uh, Cheslav Neman, yeah. you know. Some absolutely like top cream of the crop prog rock. I remember touring in Poland in on first tours, and the roads were literally, uh, you know, <laughs> you you know, as soon as you would cross over, you, you knew when you're even if you're like sleeping on top of each other in a van back then, yeah, you know, and you're touring through Europe, you knew when you entered Poland, you know, because nobody was sleeping anymore. Because no, the it's roads were. You know, yeah, just too swashbuckling, and yeah, it's true. And then the and, EU came uh, in. Yes, and, yeah. and we played places that were very poorly equipped, but uh, in just number of years, it, it seemed like actually a flash of a pan. Like within like three, four, five years, uh, the roads were completely slick. Yeah, and the festivals were blowing up, and the people were doing celebrating amazing things, like you know. Uh, you know, Dunsk, uh, the whole solidarity movement, like we would invite like Angelic Upstarts guys, you know, for a event that celebrates the breakthrough of, you know, what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, basically, yeah. the, the, the defo- Pol- Pol- Poland's departure from East Bloc. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it, was, it was a really interesting moment, really interesting time, really interesting to see this. And like, you know, I'm the son of a... Uh, you know, uh, a cook on a train mm-hmm. in the Soviet bloc and the grandson of a blacksmith that lived in a tiny village this family lived in probably for hundreds of years. The fact that I'm doing right now is giving me a sense of like, wow, I can actually do this. And I know your story too. It's like, how the fuck did we end up here? This is amazing <laughs> that we can actually do this and actually have well, an audience. the first, I mean, you know, the, the immigration, or the re- refugee-ness of it, it goes way back because, you know, the, 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 the constant Moscow attempts to colonize Poland and Ukraine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They go so back in the center. It's, it's just, it's for, for, of course, it's frustrating for us to hear people saying, oh, how, how is your, uh, you, know, you know, my heart goes out to your people in your country. You know, this year it's been, it's just like, thank you. But, you know, it's, it's not the year. It's, it's been going been, on. It's, it's been going on for hundreds of years, actually. Yeah. Now that you finally heard about it, thank you. But let's 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 separate mythology from the facts. Yeah. Let's let's start doing the tilt from people's mythological uh, perspective into the facts, because that's what that whole area they run people on mythology on yeah. literally fake. Ah, uh, the fake history. They run people on memes for um, for um, you know hundreds of years. Yeah, because it's quite accepted and understood by them that uh, people there they don't gonna look anything up and they they don't want to. They just want to get through the day and any fake you give them, they'll they'll be okay with it. So yeah. they operate on that, you know. Yeah, and especially now, as long as you know it's their like, belly yeah, is we're full. We're the greatest country in the world. Let's go. Everybody's like, yeah, we are. Never mind, everybody is like, you know, yeah. has nothing going on and never will. Yeah. And uh, all their accomplishments are completely fake, you know. But people are game to believe it because it bigs up their uh, misery and gives them some kind of relief from that misery, you know. It's, it's a pathetic way of life, truly. What do you think is going to happen? What's your hope? Yeah, I don't, I don't really uh, get in into... Um, prognosis and you kind of have to go as it as as uh, as it comes i know one thing that uh, you know it's planet earth and the gravity will be here mm-hmm. affecting everybody equally 
nobody is going to be walking on water anytime soon and everybody's going to be subject to all the things that this planet <laughs> you know uh, all the tensions and the complexities are going to remain there i think that probably there will be uh, a little bit of farther awakening in terms of uh, mythology versus facts because it reached an extreme point like you know um, what I just today I read that um, you know uh, some Russian um, minister went to India which they were hoping is their uh, kind of semi, uh, semi ally mm -hmm. you know, and he was just trying to say some nonsense and about how Ukraine attacked Russia and, uh, you know, and, and just entire room stood up and laughed at him, you know, because mythology doesn't work anymore after so much factual counter doing being done. And uh, I think there will be a lot more tilting towards processing facts as opposed to these completely fake notions you know i think it, it might be the it might be the a end of the age of of propaganda uh <sighs> you know because you know here here is the thing beginning of the end of the age of propaganda because here's the thing you know with internet which is has both great and negative aspects of anything else in this world you know uh which helped to connect, which helped so many people to connect, but helped, helped also to unleash, uh, you know, canalization of, <laughs> of absolute vomit and garbage information onto the people who are not ready to process it. And uh, it was served to people for a long time, like it's a golden age of information. It is indeed simultaneously golden age of disinformation. So, my hope and uh, what I see people doing is kind of strengthening their filter because they have to. For a while, they were just, no, it's just all great information. You know, conspiracy theories, oh, wow, it's so interesting. It's like, yeah, it's, it is interesting. It is a very interesting in a way that's, you know, uh, 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 it's in intellectual information it's interesting like rubik's cube kind of a task sure is it um the the code to live by i don't know you know i kind of have tendency to reverse to street street uh down to earth uh wits it's just who i am so i'm not going to go travel down that path too far so i feel like a lot of people are starting bouncing back to something more tangible and fact and hopefully more common essential. Maybe it will be harder to program them by uh, just 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 propaganda myths, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. I hope, and I see that in music too. In a way there's a, you know, there's kind of the new wave of bands that's coming, you know, Jail and Scowl and, uh, you know, uh, you know, well, Turnstile has been kicking ass for quite a number of years, but yeah, it's it's very um, it's very critically thinking uh, youth music, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's there's a new you know it's been a uh, new generation has come in. That generation is connecting through yeah. the internet, so people are finding um, allies. They're finding scenes globally, and these kinds of transitional moments are important to um, have one generation kind of find something that allows them to push against the last generation. Like every generation is going to piss off the last generation <laughs> in one form or another. Yeah, to a certain extent. I'm not so sold on, on that uh, uh, exactness of it. I mean, I also observe a lot of, maybe there's some kind of algorithm to that where <laughs> uh, it's slightly more complex, but I see a lot of young uh kids who come in to see us are only getting now into like Susie and the Banshees, you know? No, no, no. I'm not saying that they're, they're not going to follow. Know what I mean? like, and that's the thing to get into. Yeah. No, yeah, we're listening to like early Cure. It's like, it's undeniable. Like no. that's like some of the greatest 
um, most creative uh, music that will will gives people instant archetypal tools to be be like it instantly uncorks their genie bottle. Yeah. You run into a place where they pick up instrument of their friend without owning it and start writing the song right there. Mm -hmm. It's that inspiring, you know. I see this with my kid. Both Great. Of them. They're like, yeah. hey, this is because it's this... a real energy. It's a real string vibrating. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I was I was always uh, actually pretty keen of technology. Uh, Gogol Borelli, in a way, is kind of like was. Uh, not not everybody is aware of full trajectory of you know of bands like Genesis and development, but in a lot of ways, Google Borel is kind of perceived as a kind of super uh, you know vibe. Yeah, it's it's real strings. It's absolutely uh, kind of like on the opposite spectrum of technology. But no, really, I mean, if you listen to it with a microscope. You know, you'll find there's a lot of drum and bass samples and uh, a lot of things mixed in in there that are actually, uh, in, especially in earlier albums that were kind of computer generated because I came from a super experimental background and one of my favorite bands was always, you know, Suicide and Alan Vega and, you know, and, uh, and the Ministry, you know, and um, just... That was always very close to me, and I had projects actually with with Ukrainian musicians here in the city. And when I first came, that was actually industrial, and kind of industrial, industrial folk, I would say, maybe somewhere, somewhere along those lines. Well, you can hear that in some of the some like you know some of the dub work and some of the experimental work that you're seeing. You're definitely not like stuck. And like this, I'm just no, going to do it's, this particular. All music. those things are developing and going at the same yeah, time. All I of them. Welcome that. You know? All the channels are are happening right now. Um, before I talk about the most recent record, Solida Tina, what's the experience right now for you when you're actually in Ukraine? Because I remember, just recently, you were you went underground and you played a few shows uh, for the troops, as they say. Yeah. Um, two questions. For the troops, exactly. Um, what What's it like right now? How are people dealing? I mean, it's winter, Ukraine. There are poems written about this, and what can what can people do? What can people what people can people say? Because it is we live in a country that has a very short attention span. You know, it's one thing when you're like going back to home. It's not only this country; it's it's everywhere like that. What can you do to um, what can you offer people so that they, you know, understand the what this means? If if it goes the way we don't want it to go, what it won't go that way. First of all, uh, what does it mean? What's the wait? What what can people do? What's going on? You know, it's um, people people get very um, so people. People mean well when they get emotional. People mean well when they get uh, empathic. And people certainly mean well when they try to make sense out of it. Here is, here is the thing. This is, it's, a, it's a process. And uh, this is not something you will get done in one day. This, I mean, there's people of intellectual you know, life long pursuit, like Timothy Snyder, who are educating on that front, who are historians and, 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 and uh, analysts, they, they are cracking the case of how it all came about as we speak. So in that sense, you have to kind of, I would direct people towards an analysts who are much more powerful than me, you know, but in, in a in a in super immediate way, it's about um, really actually understanding basic things that the way American and uh, Europe's and now entire world support uh, accumulated for for Ukraine is very hard earned, and um, it's it's not getting any less hard earned respect. Yeah. It's a real deal, and uh, it's beyond real deal, and it will continue to be a real deal 
because of the brutal nature of the situation. And uh, there was this school of thought that uh, kept floating around that why is this war getting so much more attention than other wars? Well, it's very easy to explain because this war has not been going on for one year. It's been going on actually for nine years. And the reason why it went to this scale that's impossible to ignore and is getting all that attention is because it was ignored for eight years straight. There was warfare in East Ukraine on all those territories throughout this whole time without anybody talking about it and trying to write it off like it's some local matter with some guerrilla little, uh, you know, the interactions. Yeah. It's just simply not the truth of it. So the world learned its lesson. If something is this big and uh, you have to address all those wars and try to uh, resolve them, but this one in particular became, gained such a scale of insanity that I think nobody's going to deny it's absolutely uh, maniacal insanity and, and absurdity of it and, and how unprovoked it is. You know, um, that's the lesson right there. So you, you can't really be an ostrich in this world. And uh, when you think that you're living, you know, in New Zealand and uh, that all these things are happening somewhere way far away over there beyond mountains and hills and oceans, this is not really the ed age in time where that's a real reality. They're actually happening much closer to you than you think, you know? Yeah. And um, not only in informational sense, but in a sense of um, that people who were in that warfare are, might be sitting next to you in a cafe, actually. Mm -hmm. it, they might be either, uh, you know, they're getting their prosthetics done to regain mobility because of, uh, you know, certain charity organizations like the ones we work here with, or they might be actually there in hiding, you know, because they're criminals of war. Mm -hmm. So it's not so far away, actually, as it may seem. And uh, being asleep to these issues is not really, uh, it's not going to pay off. So in, in that sense, the solidarity of people and trying to be able to see or, you know, who, whose heart vision inside is kind of instantaneous is, is super important. And, uh, you know, when, when war started, like, we put together a very first benefit for it. Uh, you know, people who were immediately said yes and provided a lot of sense of direction to people who were confused were, you know, you know mavericks like Patti Smith and, and Jesse Mallon, you know, punk rocker, central guy of New York City, you know, people who were just like, there, like, it's understood what needs to be done. And, you know, and other doers, amazing musicians, uh, like Les Claypool, you know, we immediately got in touch and created a song that um, was very important for morale of, of people in Ukraine, mm -hmm. that there are some people out there who are not Ukrainian, like Les Claypool and Stuart Copeland and Sean Lennon, who all participated in the song, who are concerned in, in, in a, and taking unwaveringly Ukrainian side, and that there are people like Old Jorgensen of ministry who are doers, you know, who have Angela Biafra, yeah, and, and so on. I mean, we have quite a number of collaborations actually coming up that all came out out of people, musicians, poets who do want to chime in in a tangible way and be tangible. That's kind of what I mean. You know, the tangible, the way of tangible support is uh, always there, whether it's, whether it's uh, supporting, you know, with humanitarian aid or following more distilled informational channels and supporting that, those are pretty tangible ways. Those are really tangible you know, ways. Like um, working with people, which has been uh, my focus for a while uh, to, to regain, yeah, to regain mobility. The soldiers who are wounded, who are uh, 
uh, luckily can come to the States and be treated. And uh, there's an organization called Kind Deeds, which is here in New York. And um, so that takes a lot of sponsorship and takes a lot of uh, care. I mean, it takes real time, real day long and night care, you know, and, um, and that, and that kind of, and that kind of tells story that kind of delivers the gist of the story to people fast. Like we had the soldiers from Ukraine come to our shows over the new years, our whole New York city run of concerts. Uh, you know, people who, you know, soldiers who were on, on crotches and with, you know, very modern uh, prosthetics implanted. And, uh, you know, it was so mind blowing that I offered to get, you know, chairs for them and VIP and sit down and, you know, be part of the event. And, you know, they're all was and, and have a speech uh, or, you know, play their video and uh, kind of thing. And they were like, we don't need any chairs. Uh, we came here to get this done so we can come back home ASAP and get it, the rest of the thing done. Yeah, It's just kind of like that blows people away because it's kind of, it shows the peak, peak performance of humans, you know, brought up by this tragic crisis. It's a unifier. And it's yeah. interesting because in this country over the last, you know, as I said, when we last met, no pandemic, no Trump, over the last four years, this country, our adopted home, has been polarized like crazy. Bizarrely from you know, people that grew up in, in like red and blue and everything is flipped right now. Ukraine that doesn't really work. There's 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 sense anytime I go to a I see a show with Ukrainian band or there's a cultural event or something, there's a unification of everybody that's there that is like we are a hundred and ten percent committed to this. And a lot of people in this country it's just abstraction to them. They just they don't quite know what that means. There there isn't that sense of like we're together, we're trying to do something. Often it's seen as like a political speech. It's like one America, et cetera, et cetera, where there's, you know, these polarities of like Fox and other news channels and how people are going. And I'm, and I, you know, I don't wish a war for this country or an invasion or anything like that, but it's just like, what is the thing that's going to get you to realize that you have a shared humanity, that these are all abstractions until somebody's at your door? Like I remember, you know, my grandparents telling me this when I was living in Poland. It's like, enjoy today because tomorrow the Russians or Germans are going to invade. So be present right now. Do what you can. We have this history. Be present right now. Oh, well, now we're back to the, you know, teachings of you know, how to withstand the Kali Yuga. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to be present. Uh, otherwise, you're completely dead asleep and lost. But I do have to say that, yeah, I do have to say that, you know, I, you know, America is a very complex uh, mechanism, you know, but uh, it also would be very untrue to say that, uh, you know, uh, how, how unaware it is. I mean, it's, pretty actually well aware i mean in this i mean i know i know through music you know i'm quite well you know <laughs> i've traveled around i've been to every state it's like the johnny cash song you know i've been everywhere you know but i everywhere i go in america there's there's people who whose heart mechanism is well at place and they're <laughs> supportive on all fronts and they might not even be connected to punk rock it's um, or or you know alternative music scene uh, in, in a broader sense of it. We encountered tremendous support and uh, through uh, through through on this particular front of, of you know of uh, of last years of uh, of this war. But even before that, I mean, in when Home My Done thing happened, and uh, we were already boycotting Russia by that time. And uh, 
we there was always a fraction of people who would come out and talk to us about that and because for a lot of people in america it is quite possible that Google Brazil is their only gateway into Ukraine. It is. For not, you know, for quite some, you know, even though, you know, I've been living here for so long, you know, but the, the very, the very idea that, you know, it's called Google Brazil, Google being, Nikolai Google being a great Ukrainian writer that once again was abducted into the uh, <laughs> mythology of, uh, you know, who. Uh, as, as of some kind of a uh, 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 Russian master, it's about as Russian as as Malevich, yeah. <laughs> uh, Polish yeah. Ukrainian. That uh, you know, all those museums gonna get the record straight. They're gonna go back and finally credit people for yeah. the the cultural vortex they represented. You know, so Malevich. I think there was a whole petition of changing uh, Malevich uh, credits in Guggenheim and so on to yeah. to Polish Ukrainian. Uh, instead of Russian. So, yeah, Gogol Bordello has already kind of been telling that story uh, for years. I mean, imagine how many interviews I've done over the years where, uh, you, you know, people ask, why Gogol? And I would tell them exactly the same thing, because yeah. he's a great Ukrainian author. Yeah. You know, and, and bring up that subject that Ukraine is not Russia. And yeah. never was and never will be. That's the thing that's interesting to me right now is that you've been in this battle, you know, for a long time. And now you're actually part of the war effort. You started as a cultural warrior. It's like, I am of this culture. This is my history. This is where I'm coming from. And right now you're doing the work um, by traveling over the United States, traveling all over the world and continuing to make sure that people are still aware about this. Uh, to your point, I 100% agree. There's, there, this is an amazing country. There are people all over the place that are incredibly intelligent, cognizant, and aware of that. It's just, you know, as I said before, the cycle moves so quickly here. It's so easy. People just forget quickly. Other, other things come in where we don't have that uh, luxury. You know, we are constantly reminded of what's mm -hmm. going on. And this is the thing that I'm trying to, you know, stress on the platforms that I have and also to other artists. It's just like, it's still going on. It's every day. It's every day that this is a battle. And Very it true. Is... And thank you for reminding that to uh, to keeping that uh, a degree of awareness up because it is still going on. And even though it's on a very upper hand for Ukraine swing, you know, it still takes a lot. Uh, it, it still takes real life uh, blood and um, and treasure. It, it, I mean, it, it remains to be in a larger sense, a very much a tragedy that was let to happen. You know, uh, so it's going to take a lot of time to heal even after the, the victory of Ukraine. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but uh, but the faster the world will get it done together with Ukraine, the faster it will heal. You know, there's very little doubt in uh, in Europe's countries uh, at this point that Ukraine is a rising superpower of Europe. The way they proved themselves and uh, and earned the respect and the new alliances that they created, you know. It's it's already that's the direction it's going to take, but it's still going to be the faster uh, the tragedy will be stopped. It's the it's bad is the best for everyone. No, you know? for 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 the world, for all the other petty Absolutely. dictators, for all the other you know. It's like the world is a beautiful place. The world can be a very hard place, and a victory like this is a is a message to any yeah. other idiot that feels like, oh, maybe I can actually do this and change a couple of things here for my own or my my group's um, uh, ascension. And so I think the stuff that you're doing, that's the reason I wanted to have this conversation with you. You know, we, we met at, uh, at the Drome in New York and it's been forever. It's like, let's let's do this because this thing needs to keep going. This thing needs to keep evolving and the message needs to be out there. And the yeah, and I appreciate of, you. I appreciate you, you know, uh, 
speaking on your platforms about that, definitely. Uh, it It's a very real, <laughs> real everyday uh, situation. Yeah. And I've seen this. I've seen this with artists all across the platform. Everybody is now using anything that they can. Doesn't matter what genre, doesn't matter where they were apolitical. It could have been just like happy little pop songs. They're old old bands, new bands. Everybody is 100% committed to making sure that the message and that victory is assured. And so I've never witnessed anything like this before. You know, it's like... I know, it's unbelievable. It's like... And, and and I do have to say that actually it, it um, um, majority of the of the voices that were very prominent about that in the beginning were you know just people who are iconic like you know like um, you know people I mentioned yeah Patti Smith, Old Jorgensen, you know I, one of my heroes, Roger Merritt from Agnostic Front, he was immediately uh ready to participate in a song and support of ukraine he actually did one before that even already we there was another collab that i wasn't on part of but you know the people who were like were iconic to me they were already there and uh it it also was really uh, pretty inspiring to see that some people from pop world were pretty prominent too i mean dua lipa you know Maximum respect, you know, she was absolutely 1000% uh, in support of Ukraine from the day one. Because, because once again, like you and I, her upbringing in Kosovo. She knows. She knows the story. Yeah. It's like, the story is, why are these people coming here to take all our shit and call yeah. it their own? Yeah. You know, that's not how it goes there will no. be reaction no. to that action and when it comes from uh you know your experience there is very little room for not understanding it so it's not abstract. You know, yeah so she she was she was she was amazing with the support that she she uh provided you know that's awesome and i think it will continue to grow you know it's like yeah you know when the when the war started it's been almost a year right now and as i did my show recently i was like i did not know. I was not, exp you know, the, the press was like this gigantic, advanced Russian military and was just going to crush Ukraine. And every day it was like, no, 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 no. And even now more so. So it's a, it's a beautiful victory. It's a beautiful, so far, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it's just the, um, in the press, in social media, through these artists, it's like this, people are, there's a bunch of people that are waiting for the next shoe to drop and it's not you know it's victory it's 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 getting it's getting more and more interesting and a victory is the best possible thing that could, a victory in ukraine of ukraine is the thing that could make russia so much of a better country because i i talk to my russian friends who are horrified at this that what's going on and they're like we want to be part of the world again. You know, this is just a disaster for us. Well, there's a price to pay for letting all that happen and, and, yeah, and aligning yeah. themselves with that bigotry for so long. So long, over and over again. It's <laughs> yeah, just like... yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a wake up call to all of them, and uh, let's not get too uh, uh, let's not get too optimistic about how what is the percentage of Russian people that are critical of Putin. It's actually uh, very very. Uh, not that big mind blowing remains to be how game they are to keep aligning themselves with that sinking ship you know because once again they are brought up on on uh, fake memes and that big up their ego yep that's like Goebbels figured all that out back in a what in the 20s, 30s. And 30s and they're yeah. using that book and it's yeah. working perfectly for people who have no interest in any kind of intellectual no. insight no it's like anything that's going to make me feel better so yeah yeah i mean i know that there are uh progressive minds from that neck of the woods but their percentage remains to be extremely and extremely small so uh it's a it's a kind of a if they're into awakening 
the awakening needs to start happening about 100 times faster. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. I'm having these conversations also, you know, with like here and when I was in New York too, it's like, this, this is hard, man. This is hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, they, they're wrapped up in the mythology that's getting dispelled. And, and, uh, you know, I, yeah, there's a reason why Joseph Campbell wrote so much about power of myth. Um, uh, it does have power. Oh, it's huge. It's huge, and, and, uh, it's, it's, and at the same it's time, timeless. The, yeah, and at the same time, the, the 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 task of human intelligence is to dispel myth, dispel your own myth, as Joseph Campbell pointed out. It's all about unraveling your own myth, yeah. and getting on with reality and facts of things. So it, it feels like the world is doing that right now. Like there's yeah, a, like there's... we that that's the tendency that's kind of I, I find to be very uplifting. You know that people are um, starting getting more game towards strengthening their filter. You know, yeah. I mean, we we most of the most of the material on on Solidarity and album, uh, our new album of Gogol is kind of about that. I mean, Focus Coin, the one of the singles is precisely about that. It's interesting how you're actually able to transmutate these things that are going on and put them out into song. I think, you know, that's one of the reasons I kind of really started following the band when you first came out. I mean, we have a mutual friend with Joe Roboto who turned me yeah. on to your stuff um, before it was even out. It was just like, you got to check this out. Eugene's great. And then um, the Bulgarian bar and that whole funky, freaky little beautiful history. And yeah. did not it was plan a of diversity for sure. Yeah, yeah, at the time, and and it's just going back to New York and going back to the United States, where it's just like, okay, we there's so much potential here, and you know, I'm an optimist intrinsically, and it's weird because Polish optimist, that's a funny, that's a, a bit of an oxymoron, <laughs> but I am a bit of an optimist, and I feel like this could be one of those times where um, we could come out of this thing. Uh, so much better as as a as a planet as a species than than before we came in because that well, myth it, needed to be broken exactly i mean you know it's 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 a, it's a hard sentence to utter you know but when i was reading like you know that you know world war 2 you know once it was dealt with that actually brought a lot of people together understanding that a bigot bullying fascism is can't be uh you know a, a, a leading leading uh, you know, mood setter in the world we got to get that completely uh, out of the picture somehow and the people came of of goodwill came together uh, on that accord you know it, it is similar now you know yeah it's similar now and 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 uh, one of the victories of this situation um, is that's already happening and will be only getting stronger because of all the solidarity that you described and I described between artists and people in general is that their solidarity starts lingering on on a human factor, on humanity, yeah. on humanity. It's, it's starting to be unifying on that level that it's it's starting getting it's getting beyond any ideology or religion or uh, or even cultural affiliations it's start getting like hey it's the world it's like dealing with this incredible crisis and the more we'll deal with it together now that you're witnessing real time suffer that's undeniable and unignorable you know it brings out dormant humanity in a lot of uh you know in a lot a lot a lot of people yeah. and i think that that's probably optimistically speaking will be one of the you know plateaus that that world will reach after this and yeah. already reaching i mean you know speaking of uh polish um culture and polish uh, history um angelic upstarts british punk band 
wrote an amazing, one of my top favorite songs of all time, a song called Solidarity, as dedication to Gdansk events in 1982, right? 81? 81. 81. So they wrote that song, released it in 82, I think. And British punk band that had a very, uh, you know, working class intellectual stance on things goes on writing the song of solidarity that, you know, for, for the working class of Poland that wants to break away from Soviet bloc and supports that idea. That's acknowledgement that meant so much to people in Poland that they're, you know, still, now that we go to Poland and play that song as a tribute to Gdansk and to Polish people and to Angelic Upstarts and to Mansi, you know, we go there and play that song and you see people, kids who are like 15 years old singing it in English, like that's not their culture. That's no. that's that's the punk rock socio-political corridor mm -hmm. in action that allows for this communication. And uh, in the same time, it is a it is a that's the manifestation of that solidarity that is happening now on even larger scale. You know? Yeah. No, it's, it's, people are connecting, people are localizing. Yeah, and then, you know, I'll, I'll get, uh, I reached out to Angelic Upstarts, actually, to just let them know that they uh, were playing their song, and it was just, get a beautiful uh, reply back that we know, and thank you, and it's great, love the version, you know, if, uh, if it comes to being recorded, let's do it together, and, you know. Yes. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. beautiful moments of people like coming together on something that you don't need your whole uh, brain power to understand that it's good. It's just no, no, it's, it's, knowledge it's, that it's the right thing. Yeah, it opens up your heart. It, it yeah. affects you in a completely different way um, than anything that could. This is the power of music. This is the power of art is that like it, it affects you in a way that you will remember uh, sometimes for the rest of your life. And Absolutely. if anything like that can happen, um, those are the moments that can actually make me feel like, okay, my kids are going to be okay. They're going to inherit yeah. a world that will be better than the one that I got. Yeah. And in a way, I mean, the, 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 the very first real punk hardcore band I saw in my life was Polish band Deserter, you know? who came and played in Kiev and um, it was still Soviet Ukraine. I was like 14 years old and wow. I was already listening to, you know, things that you listen to at that time, <laughs> you know, that Kennedy's and exploited and uh, joy division and the fall and mm -hmm. kind of everything was falling on my head at the same time. And we had a punk movement in Ukraine, you know, with that, with that had a, the vibe of kind of post-punk, I'd rather say. But the first angry, loud band that I could definitely say, this is not just some punk rock, this is like some seriously pissed off shit, was Deserter. And, uh, you know, their show lasted like 10 minutes, even less, you know, and all these guys in uniforms run, run out on stage and shut the show down. and. Jesus. And uh, I snuck backstage and got one of their tapes and um, and listened to it. And yeah, what, what struck me is that they, they played a song called Moi Cry, you know? And it just says like, was like, which means my land, you know? Because yeah. that's all you had. It just had a, such a charge and such a reminder to everyone that Ukraine is its own thing and it's uh, occupied by Soviets. Yeah. And it has such a ring to it that like, don't, hey, don't get used to that. Take it back. Because people in Gdansk already did that. So they came on the wave of that socio -pol like political charge, you know, it was, it was mind blowing. So that's the power of punk that, you know, that, 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 that's there, you know. No, it's true. It's true, and it's interesting because I didn't want to. I didn't think we pivot on this in the conversation, but it was like, you know, 
what happened in Poland during Solidarity was such a shock to the entire, you know, Eastern Bloc. It was like because the Russians had invaded again and again and again, even up to like '68 in uh, in uh, what was then Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. And, so, and so suddenly, the fact that this could happen, you know, the people believed this narrative that this is forever. You know, mm. this is the new. The, the, we're we're always going to be like yeah. this. And suddenly you see a crack, and then another crack, and then another crack yeah. starts happening. And, you know, I hadn't thought about this, but this is the continuation of those cracks. Like, you know, historically, it's not like oh, one this moment. This is a major one, yeah. This is, this but this is more than a crack. This is continues, yes, but it's like in the bigger picture, in that system, but also uh, from a planetarily human history system, it's like, why do we need to have this kind of like top-down bureaucratic oppressive system of living why why does why, why do we need these fucking guys like you know why can't we just you know we have a history of not dealing with this stuff we took down monarchs we took down other systems why does this need to be the narrative that people feel like this is the only way it must be why you know it's like and it's artists and it's others that are like no fuck you we're gonna find another way and we need to to in order to get there you need to make those breaks you need to you need to find other ways to have people that inspire you and break through this and get to be in a hopefully a better place oh no absolutely and i think that maybe it's a kind of a part of even rock and roll and history that remains to be kind of under yeah. the carpet that yeah. uh how much yeah you know you just brought up prague 1968 the russian tanks invasion in there and they're trying to you know force them back into into uh obedience yeah. but you know that's when i mean ivan kral from patty smith band and went on being iggy pop's guitar player for like 10 years and uh i think he worked with bowie too i mean he did his, his family left prague precisely because of this yeah and uh, he was he was Czech, you know, and uh, and it, it had a tremendous impact on a on a development of alternative music, you know, and and so is another Eastern European, uh, born and raised in Budapest, this Tommy Ramone. That's true. Know, who started Ramones basically and, and and whipped band kind of into its direction, yeah. you know. I mean, he was not a he was not a guy at the back or on the playing drums. He he was a very very integral part of the of the vision of Ramones and and uh, you know even though I never met Tommy, but from observing and and learning his other work that you know pro as a producer and and you know having some friends in common, I could kind of tell that um, he was kind of had that a hatred for uh, for something. Of something with all this music probably that he encountered in a Soviet bloc that all this long overtures that lead to fucking nowhere, you know, all this like uh, uh, propagandistic garbage, uh, fake music that the Eastern Bloc was, uh, you know, s drowned in, you know, music that usually started with some absolutely rhythmless, uninspiring intro that never fucking led up to anything so you know of course the remote song gonna start like fucking one two three fucking bam and there we are yeah part of that frustration i'm sure is there it's just such a boiled down distilled aesthetic of opposing that so the musicians from the neck of the woods you know i mean i'm not the first one you know no <laughs> to... no 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 but it's interesting to to talk about it that way because you know we um there's a lot of news in the world. There's a lot of stories in the world. And it's interesting to be able to talk about that. For me, I didn't know. And I appreciate that because it gives me a sense of like, oh, wait, I'm one of a thread that's been doing yeah. this. And you, yeah. especially. It's like, hey, you know, and it's good to feel like you've come from somewhere. And, you know, and then you're also passing on the baton and hoping somebody else will, you know, will continue the struggle, continue the Well, work. actually, actually, yeah, yeah, the Delsh, uh Nalepa and Breakout and Mira Kubasinska, the Polish rockers, you know, those are like some of the 
kind of more um, like my father was listening to a lot of that when when I was you know one two three four five six years old, and it was quality uh, quality rock music. You know, it had a lot of style to it, and uh, and I do know for a fact that Cheslav Neman, who is absolute, you know, it's a mega genius of of music. Who I, I think that he was um, talking with McLaughlin and uh, you know other musicians like from that top fusion echelon and cross pathing with them on some festivals and. In Finland, you know, there were overlaps, you know, and maybe Slovakia, there were countries of Eastern Bloc mm -hmm. that were a little bit where, where screws were more loose, you know. There were things like that. There's like some amazing live footage I saw on YouTube of Aman Delir, you know, Salvador, Salvador Dali's girlfriend at the time, uh, or or whatever they were. It was seemed like a, seemed like they were presenting themselves at that time playing in Bratislava, Slovakia, whole entire live set with like, like, uh, of Lou Reed songs and Velvet Underground, like with a dance troupe that looked like, um, you know, guys from Hamburg <laughs> dressed in like, you know, BDSM, um, um, fashion that, was like way more radical than Lou Reed sported, you know, and he, yeah. in his peak, in peak of his interest, Jesus. you know. So there were still things that were falling through the cracks where yeah. people were more pro Western. They were like, it was obvious that they were just very, very, they're held by the force, you know, by the by the Soviets. And uh, the the second somebody was looking away, like Amanda Lear was already there, you know, yeah. busting out some seriously scandalous stuff, you know. Um, yeah, you had an audience, you know, it's like there was, there was something at that time where people were so, so interested in something else because, you know, as I was saying, it was like, it was packaged and given to you. This is, this is your land. This is your people. Uh, and we're all part of the, you know, the, the, the red kerchiefs. We all had to wear them and we went to these. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, it's not the God. It's been so long. Not the Cosmo, something like that. It was the whole the children's group, but it was like you know this. Suddenly, you sit and this is your culture given to you, and to see something raw and to see something that was so different than what you ever experienced before was intoxicating. You know, there are documentaries about this right now. My family um, had some merchant marines, and they would like sneak in this stuff. You know, <laughs> like little bits and pieces going up in Gdansk and Dinya. But there are these documentaries about, like, you know, making records on X-rays, and then oh, of course, yeah. Finding... My father had some of those. Yeah, that's like, you know, this music will be heard. This music will be found. Yeah. But then, you find your own voice in that, and you want you want to add to that. You want to add to that music. You want to add to the cultural shift. You want to you want to create something. The 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 urge to create, the urge to add your voice, is so so powerful and so needed because as soon as you know it's authentic i mean the reason why you guys are successful is that you're authentic you know you haven't you haven't dulled it down you haven't changed anything you know it's been it's continues to be pure not pure as in like pristine but it's it's the intention is still there and it's and it's powerful and it's like and every I other don't know, like, i don't know any other way i mean it's like you know people who start trying follow some kind of trend or fashion they're shooting themselves subconsciously in the leg because they're disconnecting themselves from what's on their subconscious drive you know they're trying to override it with the conscience and that's what art dies yeah and then you automatically there's like a stopwatch as soon as you start doing that you're like oh wow you're redundant from the start and then there's just there's no future for you in the same time one positive thing that i could observe that you know People who are exactly like that, who are um, stick to their stick to their um, aesthetic guns, such as Nick Cave, you yeah. know, and Robert Smith, you know, just like people, great songwriters whose aesthetic was kind of never really got on with any. Uh, 
um, a anything that was going on in the music industry. You know, they're like decades later after after being prophesied to be like the most uh, marginal and fringe artists. Uh, now they're only becoming bigger and like, you know, I mean, we've seen, everybody's seen Nick Cave become arena uh, and the Bad Seeds become arena act in the last, in the last six, seven, eight, nine years, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was telling people it's going to be like this in starting 1992, you know, and they're like, the fuck are you talking about? Why would this like appeal to that? To, to, it's like, watch. No, completely. I saw Nick Cave and it was everybody left whatever they were watching and just came in. He started singing and I was like, okay, Nick Cave's there. Let me go see. Um, but I was planning just to be there for maybe two songs. I, had, I was planning to go someplace else. And suddenly I'm walking in. I wanted to catch the beginning and it was just it was it was this really intense like everybody just churned and started yeah. walking towards this and yeah. by the time he was halfway through the other stages were like barely empty and there was this just crowd just right there because they had so seen go, something you know, love it or yeah. hate it this whole music industry still allows for things like that to happen yeah and which is a triumph a triumph of a character a triumph of a of uh, you know of perseverance yeah. and resilience to superficiality. I'm just saying that that if you have a necessary defiance, your defiance will be the guarantee of your success in the context of love it or hate it music industry. It's true, but I think I'm not that hopeful with the music industry because it always ends up doing some kind of weird suicide and I don't even know again. what that I don't even know what that word really means music industry I think that once uh, Steve Albini wrote out uh, that article in Maximum Rock and Roll like back in like I think the article called some of your some of your friends are already this fucked and yeah. it had a, and it had all the information about what these million dollar contracts actually mean Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and how the bands are all in debt and all this kind of stuff. I think that that already transformed a lot of understanding of people's music industry, but it's still, for whatever it is, uh, and whatever, how it keeps transforming, it's still, uh, 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 you know, it's, a, it's, it's where we all kind of meet. No, you can't, th this is where we meet. And it still allows, despite all its defects, it still allows for, you know, uh, for triumphs like Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Yeah. And that's I think it's great. A, I think it's a springboard. Like right now, it's interesting because you see artists like this. You were talking about The Cure before. And it's intriguing how my kids discovered The Cure. You know, because I they're listening to we stuff. Related that I'm playing. to that one. Yeah. No? I did, but they they also rebelled. You know, there's a period of time where they're like, nah, 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 that's that. Well, well, then, 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 did you start with uh, with the uh, three imaginary boys and and uh, or B side singles? No, then no, they we rebel. We, I think we were listening to <laughs> so uh, playful and excellent. We were listening to well, we were listening to a bunch of different things because it was like, um, uh, you know, my tastes go broad and deep and so I, I and I'm always I have to listen to stuff all the time because that's my job so it was like I'm sorry we're going to get this but they discovered the cure through TV they oh. discovered the cure through shows that their music directors were like you know who are like you and I they're like this is really awesome and I love this I'm going to put this here so suddenly a whole new generation discovers these legacy amazing bands and even Nick Cave and others where they're like because somebody else is putting them into a into a platform that is affecting them on really interesting ways. And it's like even you're seeing this across the board right now. Like um, you're going to see Depeche Mode. They're having a huge tour right now. And 50% oh, yeah. of the band, of the of the artist, of the fan base is going to be under 25, you know, yeah. because they're the same with The Cure, the same with Duran Duran, because they're getting something that they're not, that isn't available in the way the industry is presenting music right now. But we keep talking about The Cure, The Ramones, and, you know, and it's weird. The Ramones, my first, my third show, we're talking about Tommy. I met Tommy because I got kicked off the stage by Joey. Um, you know, I fell hard. I fell hard into music. First show was ACDC. Second show was Rush. Third show was The Ramones. Fifth show was Big Black. And then it was like, I am. 
in and I needed to slam and I needed to stage dive. God knows I could have broken my neck so many times. But I felt it was my people. Like for the first time, this weird, pale, Polish immigrant kid suddenly felt heard and seen and noisy and dangerous. And, um, And then God knows where everything from there. But those were like pivotal moments that like yeah. made me found your tribe i did find my tribe i did find my the tribe. gang now <laughs> okay god we could talk for a yeah. long time okay um two things before we go first of all um the new record solidartina is available on Bandcamp. so everybody you know that's still the best way to actually Bandcamp music. and beyond yeah yeah but you know downloads get it mm-hmm. and do you sell swag on your band camp too can you get gogo bordello shirts hoodies so. Okay. Yeah, I think you have, so. you have I think people for that. Um, you're going to put together a list of Ukrainian bands uh, who you feel are really important right now that we can share with our viewers and our listeners. Sure, right? absolutely. Okay, super important. Um, the The band is on tour. Um, they're going to be playing. They're going to be playing in Warsaw and Krakow and Poznan. So mm-hmm. all of my listeners and viewers there, go see them. You know, you just heard this thing. It's not a dry eye. Especially there, and especially, you know, uh, I was just in in Poland in November. Every cab driver is Ukrainian, and the people are there. Yeah, and, not of them. Yeah, yeah. And they Most want they come together for these kind of things. You know, they'll come together for your show, and it will be a catharsis on so many levels. And catharsis, um, yes. And you're continuing to do the work in New York. You're continuing to make sure that people know what's going on, and you're continuing to. Um, to make sure that Ukraine survives. Definitely, it will, be, it will more than survive, and the, the support is quite great. So, New York being a more of a you know leading edge in a lot of sense, so it's probably easier to get the work done here. But uh, you know, just John Zorn and Lori Anderson, you know, every yeah. time I check in, they're doing some benefit for Ukraine, yeah. or you know, it's it's not like we're the only ones. I mean, it's pretty massive thing but uh, hopefully it's like that where we can't be you know wherever you may go and it's happening it's happening i was just in la yeah. a few weeks ago stuff is going on there you know, we were talking about you know the ukrainian cultural centers and polish cultural centers flags everywhere people are doing benefits people are aware and so you know um doesn't mean you can get lazy and stop you have to continue um but it's absolutely you know that solidarity via humanity is is what's what's Absolutely. in the cooker yeah eugene thanks for the time thank you man I appreciate thank you it for being awesome like this and uh bringing up all these crucial topics you know yeah and fun topics i had no idea about this history and this is so awesome thank you <laughs> yeah thanks to you man thank you
Thank you.